All right. Hi, everyone. I'm glad that you have joined us today. I am thrilled that we are going to have an excellent discussion about leadership. So first, before I get started and get too far along, I want to check and make sure you all can hear us fine. And uh, so JP, say hi. Hello, everybody. All Glad right. Excellent. And Eric says that he can hear us. So and Lara does too. That's awesome, you guys. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go live. And Ryan here says, hi, JP, love your podcast. You're already getting some love. So that's an excellent thing. I wanna welcome- oh, well, I'll tell you a podcast story if you ever wanna hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the podcast. And I, it's great to be with you today, Kiki. Oh, it's great to be with you too. So I wanna welcome everyone to this edition of Association Chat. This is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with the topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I am your host, Kiki Latalien, CEO of Amplified Growth Digital Marketing and host of this weekly chat that's been around since 2009. And this week, we're gonna take an introspective look at ourselves and ask some very important questions. Like, what does it take to be a leader today? Do you need to sacrifice your health, family, and well-being? Is it all about the Gary V hustle? What are the important things you need to know to fast track yourself as a leader in your chosen industry? So today we're gonna to find out all about this and more with our special guest, J.P. Murray, who has quite a bit to say about this subject. And for those of you who might need a refresher or who aren't already tuned into his podcast, uh, J.P. is the president and founder of The Murray Company. He has 25 years of experience in the association industry. He's built a track record of success at the nation's most influential associations. And The Murray Company itself has been in the membership sales game for roughly like six, seven years. And the processes that they've used have evolved over time. And today, today folks, we're gonna get some of JP's best secrets, <laughs> his secrets to leadership that could help us transform our plans for 2017. So welcome JP. Glad, glad to be here. Look forward to talking about one of my favorite topics. Oh, I know. Now, okay, you guys, this this man has a regular podcast. He live streams. So his voice is out there. And one of the things he talks about on a regular basis is leadership. So it made perfect sense that as we go into the new year to prepare for it, you know, we take a look at leadership and bring JP on to talk about some of the ways that we can become better leaders and and maybe some of the things that we're not really expecting uh, when it comes to advice about leadership. So JP, I'm going to start out with a very simple question, and it's what does it take to be a leader today? Well, you know, I wanted to tee this, this first question up with, hey, I don't even know if I'm a good leader or not. But study the topic all the time. And I think what really got me passionate about leadership was the fact that in the association world, I had the opportunity to learn from some of the very best leaders in the world, I think, and some that maybe weren't up to that level. So I had a chance to learn from Tom Donahue at the, at the American Trucking Associations in the Chamber. I had the opportunity to learn from Red Cavity when he was with API with uh, with Tom Kuhn of Edison Electric Institute. So I saw these guys and ladies, the Leslie Saracens of the world, uh, the Suzanne Clarks of the world, and saw what association leadership could be like and what it meant to the organization's uh, ability to execute and their growth. And that's what got me motivated about it. So. So to answer your question now, what are the three things that I think are important from my experience, both watching and now doing it and running my company, the three things. Mm -hmm. uh, one is transparency. Transparency by like doing this. I show our people the numbers all the time because being transparent enables them to learn and see why you're making the decisions that you might have to make. 
So they see the bottom line numbers. Transparency is number one. Uh, second, second thing is authenticity. And they're going to sniff that out pretty quick. So what they see is what they get, I think, on pretty much a daily basis with me. And knowing that everybody has good days and bad, but, man, authentic is the play. And it's not a play. It, you've got to bring your real self every day. You don't put your leadership hat on, right? It must be the way you are. And then third, I think, is something that I learned over time, and that is vulnerability. Are you willing to be vulnerable? Are you willing to say, this isn't going well? Are you willing to say, I screwed up? So transparency, authenticity, and vulnerability are my three things that I think are key. Is this different now than what it's been before? And, um, you know, when somebody has sort of mastered uh, those three things or at least taken them on and understood that they, that they, you know, really should consider them and try to develop those things in themselves, those characteristics in themselves, um, you know, how does that, I guess, you know, how does that end up challenging them on a regular basis? Can you ever master those characteristics? Well, I think if you look at leaders of the past, I know one of the most, uh, one of, maybe it's a New York Times bestseller a year ago or several years ago was Lincoln on leadership. Mm. So some of these leadership qualities, if you read about Robert E. Lee, if you read about George Washington, in the book 1776, uh, those kinds of leadership qualities are immutable and never end. And most leaders are under some kind of constant and never ending improvement in their own lives and their own professional and personal lives. So I think great leaders are always chasing it. Here's what I think has changed um, in the last several years in particular. The speed, the speed at mm -hmm how our organizations are working and the way that we're running them is very difficult to manage because what I think leadership is about is the long game. But the speed of the way we do our businesses now is very fast and very quick, which can make us very short term and leadership is long game. So can you play long game while the bus is moving really fast? I think right. that is a for today's leaders that may be different than some of the greatest leaders that we've had in the past. You know, that's true. I mean, when you had a week to turn around a really important letter, it had to have been different than when you get an email and you need to get it off of your debt, like get it back to the person within 24 hours. I mean, this is a much different timeline than what we used to have. Totally. That's why that's why I think those three things that I talked about, transparency, authenticity, and vulnerability are so key. Because if you're trying to make it up, and if you don't know where your north is, and you're not transparent, and you're trying to keep things from people, you yeah. can't, and, and you're not authentic. So when you turn on a podcast, or you're doing a live blog, or you're doing what you are today, and you're trying to act through it, you can't do it. Yeah. Right. So that's why I think those being true and self-aware and emotionally intelligent are probably some of the most key characteristics of a leader today, because you don't have time to make shit up. <laughs> well, that and that's true. But, yeah, no, that's, that. yeah, no, it's true. You know, I think that. Um, I mean, you really don't have the time to make this stuff up. And it's like, it's, it's you, it's much easier uh, to, you know, be transparent, to be authentic, even if it kills you. And I, what do you guys think, those of you who are watching right now, you know, you can ask questions, you can uh, share your thoughts along the way. I'm going to try to pull in your questions as we go along. But, you know, does this, does this ring true for you? Is this something that, that you're concerned about too. And, and JP, you, you mentioned self-awareness as leaders, you know, how can we become more self-aware as leaders? Yeah. You know, I think that is an un, 
unwilling, that is a, a such a key characteristic now because of just what we talked about. Here's, I don't know if you're born with it or, or what it might be, but here's what I would say is absolutely critical. And you know, gosh, on any given time, at any given time, I'm probably speaking with a dozen or more association CEOs on an ongoing, like, like every day, because we're working on stuff with them. And here's, here's the key to self-awareness, maybe somebody on your staff that is telling you that you're full of crap. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You, you've got to be pretty nimble to be totally self-aware. I mean, some of us are maybe inclined and have that quality, but you really need to have someone on the team going, that's a load of bunk, or you're just totally off base. Now, I just did a podcast today with my wife, Diane. So we're in business together, and mm -hmm. we're talking about family business and what we learn from it. So I'm probably more self-aware than ever before, because believe me, and if you know Diane, she's telling me that. <laughs> when somebody on your team, now I'm fortunate enough to have my wife with me, but my point is you need somebody on your team to say, that doesn't smell right, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I think that that's really important. And it's an important distinction, too. You want somebody who's going to tell you, you know, the emperor has no clothes, you know. But you also need to know the difference between someone who's saying that out of love and because they, they need you to know it and someone who is more on the, the brutal side of brutal honesty and beating you up and, yeah. uh, you know, because that's a totally different thing. Right, some of them miss the honesty part. Right, <laughs> right. Part. Yeah. So yeah. What I would say to that is this, is you want those people that will say no, the people that will say the emperor has no clothes or whatever it is, but then to test them, the leader then needs to go, and then what's your suggestion? Mm -hmm. How do we fix it? Right, because the people that are always... Those are why you know those could be just whiners. Whiners never have a solution. Hmm. So you need people that will buck the system, say when things are wrong, but have the solutions um, after that. Hmm. Yeah. So you know, I want to bring in some of the comments that I'm I'm hearing over here on the side, reading over here on the side, and uh, Eric saying that he makes it easy on himself to always remember what what lie I told to whom just by telling the truth always. <laughs> Scott says, I think that leaders truly need to be authentic and accountable. If you aren't yourself and don't model for your people, then you won't be a trusted leader, With uh, which uh, Richard followed up with, you know, truth and transparency build trust. Why would you not want to be trusted? So, um, you know, I think that we're hearing a lot of people who are, are saying, yeah, this, this, this passes their smell test. This definitely is something that they can see. But, you know, you're talking about your wife. You're talking about bringing in the right people who are able to tell you the truth, who are able to um, give you positive or even not positive feedback, uh, but honest feedback. And so who are the people in your life? that um, they make you a better person and a better leader, and, and why? What are some of those other characteristics? Well, that, you know, is, as I think about this question, this is one that can be really difficult to answer because there it could be seen as some kind of Pollyannish thing. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say this. If I moved, if I moved the camera over, and Kiki, you've been over to visit sometimes. I've got, I have a picture of all the members of my team and their family. And I have to say that as a leader, um, I really do love all of them and want them to succeed. And if I can look there at, at them every day and say, you know, I want to be the leader that they deserve and that can help them grow and fulfill their dreams. Those That probably inspires me the, the most. Mm. And, you know, part of it is, I don't know if we get into this, 
in leadership a lot, but you know, bended me every day um, yeah. because I need help. You know, yeah, I need help from there. There has to be another another thing fueling you than just leading people and doing business. Well, you know, that's it's interesting that you bring that up because I know that. Um, you know, I started working with a really uh, bright young woman who she is a coach and I have always wanted to do this, but, you know, had held off on, on doing it and thought, no, I'm going to invest in myself. And uh, sure, she's, she's younger and prettier than I am, but I'm going to invest <laughs> and like deal with it. Um and it's been wonderful. But some things that she has been bringing up is she's been talking about, you know, I, I was was talking about different words that I've been connecting with. And and I'm really I want to be positive and powerful, but but not egocentric and and challenging myself to be humble at the same time as uh, being confident. And so it's a delicate balance because I think a lot of times people see your traditional type of leader and they think leadership means that there's almost like a, a, an overabundance of ego that's involved. And I think that that can turn a lot of people like myself, uh, turn my, you know, turn us away from that. And so is it that it's not just the bended knee, but it's um, accepting the fact that you don't have all the answers? Is that part of it where, you know, you have to be open to that sort of thing um, as a as a leader? I guess that's a leading question, but no, 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 no. I, I, I think that's a part of it. I think here's the difficulty in assessing leadership and how good it is, because I think actually the test and the evaluation of the leader comes after they are gone. Mm, mm -hmm. So I look at this in the association world, which many of us operate, and there are some perceived great leaders, right? And they have high charisma. They get a lot of attention. They get all the awards. They're on the panels, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, right? Yep. And I know a lot of them and very good people. But the test of that leadership is going to be what's the association or the company like after they leave? Because part of lead, probably the most important part of leadership is to have power and instill skills in people that they keep it going after you've gone. So in some ways, the book is going to be open until you're no longer there. And so testing your leaders, the ultimate test of leadership is the sustainability mm -hmm. post post you being the leader, yeah. right? Yeah. The great, so the greatest leaders ever, starting from, you know, Moses on, are the people that we still talk about. The best leaders of today, are they going to, the Beatles music is still good. We still listen to it. Lover boy, not very good. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> the leadership is kind of the same way. Is it really good or is it candy that we listen to just for a little bit? Yeah. Wow. So it it stands, so lead, good leadership stands the test of time. And is there any way that we can, you know, do a temperature check along the way, though? I certainly don't want to wait until I'm dead and gone to find out if I did a good job at being a leader. Yeah, so I think there are a couple things. One is obviously, are you hitting? Are you hitting the numbers, and are you successful from a business perspective? I think that's. I think that's an assessment. Mm -hmm. um, what's your retention? Are people willing to stay, and mm -hmm. do they stay with you for a long time? I think that means you have people that are following because you're you. Right. That's the ultimate example. But then couple that with the third thing, which is, are you a great leader so much so that other leaders want your people, right? Yeah. So that's the quantity. Do you have people that are so good, like I'm, since we're in the consulting business and we do, we have a lot of interaction mm -hmm. with um, with other associations. The best thing that I can hear 
is that they want my person full time. <laughs> right, right. And that they are not going to get them. Yeah. That's, that's when I know we're hitting the mark. Hmm. You know, that's, that's really interesting because, you know, I, um, I'm always curious to see like, how can I sort of test along the way? And, um, that, that's a really good key is like, you know, if, if people are trying to get your people or if they're trying to bring you on and they see something and they, then obviously you're on the right track. Right. So, I, I think so. um, what about things that can undermine your success? So if somebody's, you know, what are the things that we should look out for that might be signs that we're, we've fallen off track and we need to do some, some, I'm talking in idioms. We can do some course correction here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I think, I think one of the things that's most dangerous is this. And I never, I never really appreciated it until I was running the company for a while. Mm -hmm. And that was the recognition that in some ways, you're, the people that you lead are listening to you all the time. Everything you do, yeah. body language when you come into the office, how you run the staff meeting, all those things. Your email correspondence with them. They're listening all the time. So then the danger is having, since that is the case, the, the feeling that you need to be right all the time or that you know the answer all the time. Hmm. Because you, do, you aren't right all the time and you don't know the answer all the time. So if, if they're list, if you believe, if you start to give that kind of impression that you do know and you are right and they're listening to you all the time, uh-oh, that's like toxic. That's like yeah. a big damn problem. So yeah. if, I, if there's one thing that I kind of watch really closely, good days and bad, and that is, am I giving off the impression that they that I know? So they're coming to me all the time. I'm being right all the time. That's a big problem in leadership now. Wow. And probably always yeah, you know, it's funny that you're saying this because – I just saw a friend of mine, Julius Solaris, who uh, he runs the event managers blog and, um, you know, just really active in the events community. And he posted a quote, certainty is the biggest enemy of growth, which I think is, is kind of what you're talking about here. It's like, if you, if you're, if you think you're certain, you know, and if other people think you're certain too, that's probably a, a good indicator that um, you're not growing or, well, that's, you know. Well, yeah. And the, the other thing, and, the, and I'll tell you for those folks that, that, I, that know me, this is a challenge. And that is you feel like you have to fill the space. It's like you need to have the answer. Silence is bad. And I, and I kind of care it to uh, coaching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I coach travel softball. I love it, by the way. Um, and the best teams, this is funny, the best teams are the ones where the coach doesn't say much. Mm. They're playing. They're doing. They know. They know what's going on. The worst teams are, <laughs> the, worst teams are the ones where the coach is like, over there, do that. <laughs> no. They're wanting to do it all. Right. Do it. I mean, yeah. Right? It's the same. So leaders have to recognize that, you know, hiring the, those great people that can actually run the ball, steal the base, hit the ball, teaching them how to do that, and then let them do it. Yeah. You know, and. Oh, yeah. If you're always coaching them. They don't know, they don't know what to do when you're not. Yeah. Right, right, right. And so, so all of this is right, you know, in line with the direction that uh, the audience that our participants are um, going in. Uh, Eric says, JP, think of great coaches. A great leader creates great assistance. Their success will drive them to go elsewhere to build their own coaching tree. 
duplication. Right. Scott says, no one knows the answer all the time. The answer all the time. I, I think there is also the opportunity for a leader to let their people do what they think is best, even if based on their experience, uh, something else may work better. And then Ryan says, leaders that I respect most are or were always learning. They don't believe they know everything and aren't threatened by underlings who are smarter than they are. They actively seek out people for their team who are smarter, better, faster than they are. So, uh, and a lot of people um, just really liking some of these comments that are coming in. So, um, yeah, absolutely. And your coaching metaphor, perfect. <laughs> it's yeah, a great example. I, I did uh, one of my last podcasts. I don't know when we're publishing it, but uh, was how I screwed up my company. Right, so I think most problems that exist in associations and companies are ones that the um, that the leader made. Hmm. So I think the problems are at the top, and you have set up an organization, whether you're an association or company, to get exactly the results that you have now. The organization that you have is perfectly set up with the absolutely best processes and the excellent marketing and the greatest salespeople to get you exactly what you have. So if it needs to be better, that needs to improve. Well, so right? yeah, absolutely. And you are, you know, I, I talked about this, you are an association pro, but you also are an entrepreneur, you are a business owner, and you have, um, you've certainly, you've done well in business. And so because of that, you know, my, my next question for you uh, has to do with that business. And it has to do with what's some of the best advice you've ever received about business from someone that you consider a leader? Yeah, Okay. Okay, I have two of them. Okay. And totally different. Uh, the first one was from Tom Donahue, who's the president and CEO of the U.S. Chain. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone asked him how, and he's known for his ability to raise revenue and get money into the organization. And somebody said, Tom, you know, how, how do you do it? And he said, well, you give them the pitch, you, you look them in the baby blue eyes, you give them the pitch, and then you shut your mouth. Wow. Next guy that talks, next guy that talks loses. So in sales and in business, that's one. Next, right, make your pitch, shut up. Next guy <laughs> that talks loses. And then there's one, it's a little, so Kiki, this will be a little blue, so maybe the last one, the last time you have me on. It was my dad. It was my dad. So, you know, I grew up in Oklahoma and very, it was a great upbringing, but, you know, I didn't grow up in the Beltway, inside the Beltway. And so one day I was calling my dad and I was complaining about every, my boss, where I lived how long the commute was, the guy, a couple of my members I was having trouble with, and you know what he said? He, he, he gets back to me and goes, son, he says, uh, if you've met more than one a-hole today, maybe it's you. <laughs> and, and I that, love that. I love that. <laughs> like, you know, but you know what? You, ever, you can get caught up into that, especially in the association world, right? It's so easy. Yeah. Oh, remember this, and they're griping about how big the font is on the badge. They didn't like what we had for lunch. They don't know, they don't like who they're sitting next to at the banquet and all this noise, and which is noise, but we can get wrapped into that all the time, and pretty soon it perpetuates you. So... Yeah. I always kind of check that. If you've met more than one jerk today, maybe you're the problem. Yeah. And you need to kind of shift the way you're thinking about things, especially when we're in the customer-facing 
business because they're coming to us with their problems that we should solve for them. So those are two pieces of advice that are like totally different. I love that. And, and you know, actually the blue humor probably, uh, or the blue advice probably means I'll invite you on sooner rather than later. That's kind of the way, a little insight into me. So uh, I've always heard that readers are leaders. So I'm curious about what you're reading, what do you hope to read in 2017? Yeah. Are you a reader? Are you like odd uh, audio books? Or are you like, what's your thing? Because I know you're into podcasts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, definitely something that I've been, I've been trying to do more of is, you know, I, 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 I appreciate reading like a, an actual book you can hold. However, I realized it takes me so long to do that. And when I just gave up the ghost and said, okay, I've got to just face facts, I might think that it's wonderful to be able to read uh, hardback books and, and you know, to actually hold stuff and, and go through it. But I can't get through them fast enough, you know. And once I started just going ahead and doing Audible, I, uh, I start, I've consumed a huge amount of books just this year. But how about you? Like what? You know what's on your in your leadership library right so what i'm reading right now is money master the game by tony robbins yeah. And, uh, yeah. and oh my gosh <laughs> i mean that that's changed the way i've thought about resources my long-term financial situation and the fact that i was frankly outsourcing that to other people that game changer yeah um so i'm almost finished with that one and then the next one what i like to do is and kiki i i totally get what you're describing but i do believe you're right that with all the podcasts and other things and video i like to watch a lot of video things that i'm consuming that 15 to 20 to half an hour bit of time you spend before you go to bed or whatever reading the book is different and it's an experience we should continue to do as leaders. Yeah. So that's the next up is I like to go revisit some old ones. So now that I've read one, I'm going back to an old one, and it's the Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet. Um, I can't remember the, the Ultimate Sales Machine because I want to I want to see how we're doing, and I want to go back and continue. And then I read a lot of. Then I want to go back and. Uh, we look at some leadership books for this year, but money master the game. Oh man, I get on that right away. Yeah. So I didn't want anybody to think that I'm, this is what I've been uh, reading. Uh, let me go over this way. Million dollar consulting, Alan Weiss. I read it uh, a few years ago and did not, uh, I couldn't apply the stuff that I read the same way I can now. And so I'm going through that. And I got this uh, daily stoic and this is my bedtime reading because mm -hmm. it's a daily uh it's just real quick and it's a meditation where i can think about it i write a little something on the page on my take on it and uh and learn a little bit about stoic philosophy at the same time it's really good for uh anybody who doesn't know a little bit about stoicism it's it's really good for people who if you are in a world that uh, you understand you can't control the outside forces, but that you can control your reactions and what you're doing and, and how you handle things, that's for you. Um, and it gives you support on that like, every day. But anyway, um, thank you for sharing those. You know, I also, you know, like magazines and stuff. Uh, Inc. Uh, is a magazine that I go through, Fast Company. Um, and I have to admit, oh, I get oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a big fan of it. I think Ink Magazine's content is very good. And I'll, I'll give you one one quick item. I went to an Ink Magazine conference uh, this, I think it was this year or maybe the year before, that was in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, folks, um, I know it's not association-oriented, but I – I would go, I would drop and go to one of those if it's in your area. They do a great job. 
So why do you think so, that too? Because um, it sounds, I mean, it sounds great. I've looked at some of the advertisements for those and the people that they have lined up look fascinating. But what, I mean, what do you think that people will get from that that they won't get from some of the usual conferences that they go to? Well, so let's just, I'm going to make some assumption that we're in the association world. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope this goes off okay. I, all right. I think we're regenerating the same old junk in the association world. And I'm probably, you know, that could be my fault too. But, you know, even when you go into some of the communities, it's like, hey, can somebody show me your membership brochure? What? I mean, what? Membership yeah. brochure. I mean, that, we're still learning some of those things. And I, hey, some of it's 101 stuff. What I liked about the ink thing was it's Marcus Lemonis, mm -hmm. the prop on MSNBC show. It's the guy, the, the, the ladies that started Soul Cycle. They are so close to the market and they are entrepreneurs and they're learn and they're talking about what they're learning right now in the marketplace in real time. And I think in the association world, sometimes our learning is looking back. And here's what we did. There's a lot of that in our association world. Oh, here's what we did. Here's what we did before. Now, I want to know about where do we need to go? And then, yeah. by the way, these are people that we need to be relevant to. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's why I like that's why I like it. Mm hmm So with that said, are there any conferences that you know that you're going to make it a point to go to in twenty seventeen? There may not be, yeah. but you know. No, so I want to go to the Inc. 5000 conference mm -hmm. for small businesses definitely this year. Um, what else am I looking to do? Oh, that's that's the only thing that's really on my on my radar screen right now. And you know, the other thing is, I want to do a conference with people like yourself and some uh, some innovative thought leaders without having to go through the system. Yeah. I want some good association entrepreneurs to talk about what's happening in the association world. And I think there's, I think there's some narrative out there from folks that are running some really good businesses that are serving associations that we could all collaborate and even the associations could learn from. You know, I think you have a really good point there. Uh, a lot of the people who I, I talk to who go into consulting in the association market, they, got um, tired of sort of, they were trying, they were ahead, they were ahead, they were trying to push, push, push. And they jumped out so that they, cause they wanted to keep building and learning and developing. And and um, not to say that the people who, who work in associations don't, cause of course they do. But I think a lot of the people who jump into uh, into those roles where they wanna work with other associations, they're you know, sort of, um, they're sort of addicted to learning and, and growing at a faster rate. You know, they want to, they, they just, maybe they're more impatient and, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to, to talk to those people because many of my friends who, um, are in the consulting world are, they, they started out in associations and they just wanted to keep going and driving and some of the bureaucracy in, internally got to be too much for them, you know? And, you know, this, this could be some kind, this could be perceived as some kind of veiled uh, criticism of, of ASA. And, and it, oh, that, yeah, no. that, that is not my intent. Yeah. They, um, they do a very good job and they have a broad constituency that they have to address, right? Yeah. Um, that being said, there are other things that I think can be discussed with um, high-performing organizations, and it's a different dialogue about things around events and advocacy and uh, business development that I think could be very interesting from some different from some different people than we're used to hearing from. Yeah. Well, and another thing is that with the models and everything changing so much for different associations, um, 
it's not going to be your use. Yeah. It's not going to be the people who have done things. There aren't going to be a ton of best practice examples of other associations who have done it because it's new, it's fresh, it's changing. And you can't always get that uh, from the association space because it's like trying to, uh, you know, trying to drive a, a big tanker or something. It just takes forever, you know? No. So anyway, um, back to leadership. So how can leaders best prepare for this new year? You know, I promise people that they'd be able to come to this and get your advice and find out how maybe they can improve things, become better leaders personally, professionally uh, for 2017. And so what's your advice? Yeah, so this could, this may be a little bit different than what people might expect. But I would say, how are you, not, this, not how are you preparing for 2017, but how are you preparing for the next 24 hours? I mean, mm -hmm. are you really, like, I heard, gosh, I wish I could give them credit, but I heard somebody talk about this. Instead of your New, Year, New Year's resolution, what about your now year resolution? What are you going to change immediately? Yeah. What are you, I mean, right, what is it? What's the old saying? Tomorrow is the devil's favorite word. <laughs> like, I'm not, and I'm yeah. sick, you know, and I'm, I mean, yeah, it's cute. And, but I'm also like, you know, we've got to make changes immediately. And the, and the, and the planning and the preparation for the next week, the next day, changing those things on a, in a real time basis is like my and training myself to do that is probably as much important as setting my goals for 2017. Now I'm going to go and we're going to set goals, but the thing that I really want to improve on is how prepared am I when I leave the office this evening, am I for tomorrow? Right. Do I, do I have, everything planned out? Do I have my schedule? Do I have my top six things that I'm going to accomplish? Man, I'm thinking about that a lot. So God, I probably hedged on the question. No, that's okay. That's all right. It's fair though. It's authentic, right? And uh, yeah. you're, you're being fully transparent. No, yeah, no more, no more. This is what I'm going to do next year. Yeah. It's going to be like, what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to do now. Well, what you know, so your team, and correct me if I'm wrong, but your team has, you guys have daily, pet, like you have daily, like oh, yeah. those quick meetings, which, so is that a time when you come together and try to like, I mean, tell me about that. How does that feed okay. into this? Okay. Uh, yeah. You know what? I have a couple things that might be helpful here. Okay. So. In, in, under leadership terms, I think one of the, the most important things is that people have clarity. The people, the, if you're managing people, I guarantee you, one of the things that is most important to them, are they absolutely clear where they are right now? Mm -hmm. So we do a couple of things. One is um, daily pep rally for 30 minutes. And we try to make it, it's probably more of a weather report than not, but it's here's where we are in safe, in communications, in consulting, and in administration. So it gives you the chance. There's really no excuse not to know what the hell's going on because we're talking about that every day. Mm -hmm. The third, the second thing is we have weekly one-on-ones with direct reports. So if you're if you have direct reports coming to you. It's a one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes, 10 minutes on about you. So Kiki, if you and I are working together, so Kiki, tell me your top things that you want to talk about for 10 minutes. I've got the things that I want to talk about for 10 minutes. And then the last five are, um, let's summarize what the next actions are. And then um, let's talk about the next meeting when we're going to get together. Those have to happen on a weekly basis, no matter what. Yeah, that's weekly, and then 
quarterly, we're going to have we're going to have our quarterly evaluations, which, by the way, should be the build out of those weekly sessions. The weekly, quarterly, and then that all adds up to the annual review. So all that means is, and I'll add one other thing: those all add up to no surprises. Right. Right. Or you know what? The leader's totally out to lunch. Yeah. So have you ever been, we've probably all been it, and we've been in the situation where you've been surprised in an evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. That that is totally the leader's mistake and problem because they've had all of these opportunities to address it. And then the other thing that you add on top of that layer is immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. So when something goes wrong, hey, can I give you some feedback? Yes. Okay, here's what it is. What can we do next time? Whether it's positive or negative. So immediate feedback, weekly one-on-ones, quarterly, quarterly uh, reviews, and then an annual evaluation. There's a lot of good leadership happening or opportunity to have good leadership within that framework. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think that um, I think that you have to have like the regular check in to know that the priorities are aligned, too. And that's the thing that I've seen, whether you're um, no matter what kind of organization you're working with, if you're in business for yourself and you have clients, if you are working with members, um, you know, it's it's that misalignment of expectations that can get us all into trouble, you know. Yeah, you know, I've got a, a quick story on that. Um, I was managing, I don't know, let's say 40, 40, 40 people at the chamber at one time. And I had a direct, I, I learned, I heard of this tactic on, I think it was manager tools. So webcast, uh, a great resource. It's managertools.com. Mm -hmm. And they, this is the single most effective leadership tactic you could ever implement, and I live by it. Go to your staff and say, what are the five most important parts of your job today? Go write them down in order. <laughs> I'm Lara, gonna, I'm looking at you. Are you ready to do this? <laughs> okay. so I'm, going, I'm going to do the same thing. So Kiki, go write down the five things in order. Okay. I'm same thing. And the next time we come to our one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to go through them together. Wow. So here's wow. what I learned. The people that I had the best relationship with that were performing well, we were aligned. Guess what? Boom. Boom. Yeah. I had one young lady. She's become a very successful leader. And, but she would, um, she would get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And when she got overwhelmed, she would be act out in a way that wasn't productive. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it was it was never an open she performed so it was just a pro, it was a challenge. So I said, okay, five, I'll do the five. We'll follow that. So she comes and she comes in to see me and she's like, oh my gosh, here are my ten things. And I couldn't put them in order because they're all important. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what? That's people, what we call a breakthrough. Yeah. Because it enabled me to say, that is exactly the problem. Mm -hmm. Let's get clear. Yeah. Here are the in order. Number one is number one for a reason. If you, if you succeed here, the other four, frankly, aren't that big of a deal. And I don't know what the six through ten are, but I'm probably never even going to think about it. <laughs> so, yeah, if they're uh, not at the top of the list, that's not, you know. Right. So I would, if there's, you know, it's too bad. I'm sorry I mentioned this, you know, 15 minutes into the deal. But <laughs> if there's one thing that I would do with my team, it is that before the end of the year. Wow. Before, you guys, yeah. everyone listening, I hope you realize that it, it is true. We are 50 minutes into it, and this 
really great, valuable piece of information came out. So this is, this is what you're, this is like, you know, you're getting this, this truth, this negative truth, uh, this far in. So good, good on you for sticking with us this far. And I wanted to try something new, uh, with you, JP. And I want to, I want to, uh, test this out because, you know, with association chat, I, have tried different platforms. I've tried different formats. And today we're going to try a little game. <laughs> and it is, we're all about associations. So this is a word association game. I got this from the Through the Noise podcast, guys. I wanted to test it out. And so are you ready to play? Better it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So here's how it works. I am going to say a word, and I want you as quickly as you can to say the word that comes to mind, the first word that comes to mind. Okay, All right. got it. All yeah. right. I'm ready. And everybody, everyone who's actually uh, participating right now, who's listening right now, live, if you want to, you can play along and you can type the first word over here on the side. It might be very interesting to see what some of us come up with. Are you ready? All right. So one, two, three, influencer. Tom Donahue. Weird. <laughs> flaming lips. So what was that? The flaming lips. They're a rock and roll band. Oh, the flaming lips. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh game changer. Donald Trump. Passion. Gosh, why is it so hard? Passion. Passion. Why am I coming up with this is hard to do? Passion. Passion. You know, Something has to have popped. Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. All right. And growth. The Murray Company. <laughs> You guys, I mean, you know, he he is that's what you're passionate about right there. So there you go. Growth <laughs> and the flaming lips. Now I know, you know, if you receive something, you know, like an MP3 in your inbox, the flaming lips, you'll know who it's from. All right. Uh this was a lot of fun. Everyone, what did you get from this? What was what was your number one takeaway? And how is it going to, uh, how are you going to apply it in your lives when it comes to leadership? I'd love to see you write it over into the side. You can tweet it to us for sure. But I want to thank everyone for joining us for this week's association chat. I want to take time to thank JP, yes, and your team for helping us get this set up. But JP, thank you so much for providing, providing all of us with your time and your expertise. And I don't want all of you guys to, to head out just yet. I want you to know that we have next week, it's going to be an unusual day for association chat because I will be reporting on and off live streaming through Facebook Live from the ASAE Tech Conference. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, as, I'm attending as press. Can you believe it? It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm interviewing some folks there. Uh, the week after, uh, on the 20th, we are talking about the apps of a leader. It's like the abs of steel, only it's the apps of steel. And it's with Beth Z, your nerdy best friend. She's a crowd favorite always. And she's going to share with us a little bit about some of the technology that she sees leaders using on a regular basis and some things you might want to check out for the new year. But I hope you've had some fun with us and that you've learned something new and something that's going to help you, your associations, your businesses now or in the future. If you like association chat, please consider sharing this chat with your colleagues. Give us some love. Give us a thumbs up on social media. And as always, if you want to continue the discussion, you can join the association chat Facebook group for regular updates on upcoming topics and special guests. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you back next Tuesday. And as always, as always, we want you to stay in touch with us and have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, JP.
All right. Thank you, Kiki. Love what you're doing. All right. Thank you. All right. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.